I try to share my experience with tibial bone keratoprosthesis and in stage ocular surface diseases. I am proud to work in KKH. I am enjoying the opportunity to live in your country and to know your custom and, and your people. In this presentation, I will follow this table of, con of contents. A short introduction, the nomogram of treatment on limbal stem cell deficiency with keratoprosthesis, indication, outcomes, cost effectiveness, and finally, a summary. We remind that the ocular surface is a component of the lacrimal functional unit, and his integration with the central nervous system has the only one function, the corneal transparency. When the unit fails, especially the limbal stem cells, we have to recover the corneal transparency with corneal transplant or a limbal epithelial transplantation on in the worry scenario with keratoprosthesis. We must take care that around the world, 8 million people are blind for corneal diseases. Nearby, 90% of them living in developed countries, and again, 90% are curable. In the United States, there are doing more than 50,000 corneal transplants, and then same worldwide, worldwide other 20,000 uh, tissues. Also, this is a large number, but this is not enough to cover the corneal supplies. Other important data is the success of the penetrating keratoplasty. Depending on the diagnosis, it reached a success to 95% of five years in patients with keratoconus or lower in patients with bullous keratopathy or corneal neovascularization. When the first PKP fails, the second graph success is only 55% at year two and nearby 0% after the third graph. In this context, the keratoprosthesis has an important role in the treatment of corneal blindness. What happens when the limbal stem cell fails and compromises the corneal transparency? We must classify the limbal stem cell deficiency in partial or total, unilateral or bilateral, and inflammatory as OCP or Steven Johnson syndrome, or non-inflammatory as alkali burns. Total and bilateral limbal stem cell deficiency without proper treatment almost finish in the well-known spectrum to the end stage ocular surface diseases. In the chapter 14 of this book, we project the management option of limbal stem deficiencies, and in this lecture, I will talk about only ab about bilateral and total limbal stem cell deficiency. The first step in the treatment of any stage ocular surface diseases is the management of tri trichiasis and the oculoplastic surgery. We need to abolish the eyelashes rubbing or injury over the globe in order to improve the prognosis of any surgery. For example, this patient has a symblepharon between the superior tarsus and the superior limbus, secondary to the unilateral chemical burn, and the symblepharon was released with a full sickness oral mucosa and sutured over the sclera. This is the full, this is the full sickness oral mucosa, and this is the integration after three years of the surgery, and the superior tarsal plate was also released. After the surgery, the patient is ready for a cultivated limbal epithelial transplantation or a Boston keratoprosthesis. So it's always this is the first step. When the patient has total bilateral limbal stem cell deficiency, but with a normal Schirmer test, is really important, and the ocular surface is healthy, a synthetic keratoprosthesis, as Boston keratoprosthesis could be a good option. The first keratoprosthesis design was published by Pellier de Signy in France in the 17th century. However, the first K-Pro implant was done by Weber and Nussbaum in 1955. One century later, Dr. Joaquin Barraquer in Barcelona did a Dorsi implant and worked with the Colombian ophthalmologist Hernando Cardona in, in, the, in the development of the keratoprosthesis. Hernando Cardona continued his research with Dr. Castro Viejo in New York during, those, during the next two decades. The first successful keratoprosthesis was the Newton Ball uh, Cardona K Pro. He did more than 1,500 implants in patients with bullous keratopathy with a retention rate of 80%. He was the first one to describe some of the modern concepts that are still using in K Pro surgery as the lens extraction. 
The superior eye photography showed the cosmetic appearance of this type of cape. Nowadays, other nut and balls models are implanted in Russia since the 70s. We can see in this picture. More than 1,000 patients have been operated, and uh, this picture shows the current model used in China and Russia. Several coral skier capers were described by Dr. Cardona with plastic skier or with dacron screen. Skier. In the 80s, the Pintucci caper with dacron skier was used, but no, it was unsuccessful. And the Alpha Core with polymethyl metraclilateral screen got the FDA, FDA approval in the 21st century, but the success of both caper were, were poor. There are other two coron skier caprot implanted into the corneal stroma, the Seul caprot with dacron and PMA optics, and the Keraclear caprot with acrylic spray and CE approval. These caprot are underdeveloped and in the future could help us in the treatment of superficial leukoma as climatotropa keratopathy in the kingdom, or even the treatment of keratoconus patient with superficial leukoma. In the 1980, 1982, Hernando Cardona approaches his result with the true and true capro across the superior eyelid. We can see the pocket in this picture between the fascia lata and the cornea in a patient enucleated for painful eye for secondary glaucoma and retinal detachment. 30 years later, has been described the Boston to capro. And it, in, in, and it had been implanted in less than 40 patients with ocular surface keratonization around the world. The success is still poor, but this is the only two, uh, there, there are, there are, this is the only two description about the true and true, the superior elite of Boston or keratoprosthesis. Finally, we have the Boston one keratoprosthesis. The Boston one keratoprosthesis get the approval in 1992 and more than 13,000 patients have been operating worldwide. The left photography showed the first model, a nude and ball model, and the other uh, model, and the current model, is the, is the, is the, uh, the titanium plate and the locking ring that they, we are using right now. This is an example of a good candidate for a uh, Boston Capro, a middle-aged patient, suffered a blast injury and developed total bilateral limbal stress de deficiency but with a normal treatment and normal eyelid function. He was operated three times of PKP in the old days, in the OD, and came for visual re rehabilitation in his only one eye. The other eye is blind. This video shown the current Boston 1K Pro surgery. not running. Okay. The best call outcome in are gotten in a FACI vitectomized eyes with a close follow-up following the mass engineer international protocol. The first step is the scleral fixation of the flaring reel. Then the we did a cautery in 360 degrees of the limbal neo vessel. A partial trephination was done with that 8 millimeter suction trephine and cohesive viscoelastic was injected in the anterior chamber. The k was assembled at the usual manner. First, the donor cornea was central trephined with a 3 millimeter dermatome. And a 8.5 millimeter graft was punched out with that trephine. Then the front plate of the capro was put over the sticky surface. And was assembled at the user manner. With the assembly tool. A cohesive OVD was applied over the K Pro. Then 
the bottom was excited with corneal scissor and in this patient we you can see the thick retrocorneal membrane was also excited it's really important to remove all the anterior segment in order to improve the outcome the patient have a retrocorneal, a retrolental membrane. After that, we remove the IOL. And under canalog assisted anterior and corbitrectomy, the canalog was injected. The video is not running well. The capsular wall was also excited. Then an anterior vitrectomy and also the a core vitrectomy was done. With a few rubs of canal logs, was injected again in order to be sure of the success of the vitrectomy. You can see with the sponge, it was removed 100%, and cohesive OVD was injected in the core anterior cavity, one, millim one millimeter, milliliter. And the Graph with assembly capro was sutured with 16 10 nylon. The suture were buried and subconjunctival ketzol and decadron was applied. Finally, the bandage control lens was applied also. Two weeks later, the Kepro was well tolerated, and after three months, the graft surface was covered with conjunctival epithelium. You can see all the vascularization, but it's well tolerated. The real end stage ocular surface disease happens with the, pa the patient have total and bilateral invalid stand deficiency with severe dryness, keratinization of the ocular surface, Simblepharon, and in this patient, the only available option is the biological keratoprosthesis with tooth or tibia bone. Dr. Stamprelli in Italy gave birth the osteodontokeratoprosthesis in 1963. He implanted into the stroma the first tooth cave pro patients. This picture in the, in the low shows one of the first six patients, but unfortunately, were screwed after six months. After this first attempt, he started to use the oral mucosa graft to put the tooth uh, capro over the cornea, and with this treat, discovered the biological support of, with the tooth. The oral mucosa graft and the exoprosthesis over the cornea, he solved the problem of the extrusion. This, is, this was um, one, un, one, un, uh, one of the most important ophthalmologists in the keratoprosthesis surgery. His former fellows, Dr. Temprano and Dr. Estamperi, modified the, the technique during the following year, and currently, both techniques, the tibial bone and modified osteodontokeratoprosthesis, are the gold standard of CAPE or end stage ocular surface diseases. Why Dr. Temprano start to use bone in, this, in his patient? First, the tibial bone grass was the first bone used in medicine in the 18th century, and secondly, it had been used since the, f since the first uh, World War, and third, it is still using in the modern orthopedic surgery with anterior iliac crest and ribs and grafts. He is Dr. Temprano, and he is doing the surgery at his 75 years old in Barraquero Ophthalmology Center in Barcelona. This picture was taken the last day of my training in Tibial Bone Capro on December 30, 2014. This is the video of the surgery. Okay. 
Tibial bone is indicated in patients with stem cell neovascularization and symblepharon, patients with keratinization of the ocular surface, or after several regrafts. The surgery has two stages. The first stage is the ocular surface regularization with the ocular mucosa, then the making of the keratoprosthesis with the tibial bone lamina, and three months later, the second stage with the implantation of the biological keratoprosthesis as an exoprosthesis between the oral mucosa and the cornea. In this case, the traco uh, is a patient with trachoma. The surgery starts with 360 degree limbal peritomy, then two relaxing stitches through the canthus. can see. The muscle was identified and clean. The panus, the corneal panus was removed in 360 degrees. and the ocular surface was completely regularized. After that, we get the oral mucosa graph. It's more or less the diameter is 3 or 3 centimeters. It's a full sickness oral mucosa graph. We use uh, the Colorado needle with cautery, monopolar cautery. We use also this special lip clamp. It's what uh, made by stores 40 years ago. Unfortunately, we are looking one of them. Uh, it has been impossible to look at. Then the minor salivary glands are, are trimmed. And the oral mucosa is sutured first to the four muscles in order to improve the vascularization. And after that, in 360 degrees around the, the, the sclera. The remaining conjunctiva is, uh, is sutured over the oral mucosa graft. The second part of the first stage is the, is the assembly of the, the capro with the tibial lamina. So at first, we is doing a, in the superior tibia below the tibial plates. The video is not, is, not, is not running well. It's really slow, but this is not the normal speed. But with the um, striker, we get, we get the tibial lamina is the one centimeter of diameter. This is the diameter, one centimeter. And we or oily, we close the skin. This is the, lami the tibial lamina. We use only the cortex, and we remove the calcareous bone. We regularize all the boulders. And after that, we drill with several length of drill the center of the, of the lamina in order to get a 
3.5 millimeter of diameter. This is a handmade keratoprosthesis. And it's biological because we are using the, the own bone or teeth of the patient. This is the Morcher uh, 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 cylinder. Just to stick the cylinder to the bone, we use an acrylic bone. This is the same bone of the dentist. And it smells the same. Then we put the cylinder in the middle of the hole and we glue and regularize the cement around the, the, the cylinder. Not working well. running at the half of the speed. And this is the final K-Pro with the tibial plate. They have two surfaces, one of the 5 millimeters, the other the 3.5, and the length is 9 millimeters. We put it in the inferior pocket in the eyelid, and three months later, this is the appearance of the oral mucosa over the ocular surface, complete heal. We remove the tibial capro from the pocket. It's really, really slow. And you can see the capro is surrounding of fibrotic tissue. It's really important to have a Good, 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 good integration of the capro. That we remove the the capro and we clean the anterior and posterior surface. The posterior surface, this one, is more or less in between 4.5 to 5 millimeter of diameter with the with the glue. We close obviously the, the eyelid. And after that, this is the most difficult step of the surgery. If three months later, we need to, to leave again the, the oral mucosa. It's really difficult because the, the tissues behind the oral mucosa are, are thinner. We can, we can, we can use or the Colorado cautery or even the, the scissors. That we remove in more or less 300 degrees, and we only left uh, the inferior oral mucosa attached to the inferior uh, muscle. And you can see. Finally, the the capro, the tibia capro, is secure with three suture over the sclera in order to reduce the, the time when the anterior chamber is 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 open. We refine the central cornea with a four millimeter refine. And after that, we remove the lens and the iris. In this patient, have a hypermature cataract. Some patient, the cataract removal with the cryo. Another patient, as this patient, was removed with this, with the spatula. No, right now running at the third of the speed. We did an uh, anterior vitrectomy and also core vitrectomy, and also the anterior chamber is filled with the cohesive OVD. We introduced the fo 
4.5 or 5 millimeter posterior part of the capro in the hole and we secure in 360 degrees the capro and we must take it about the capro will be uh, won't be tilted the other mucosa is closed again and finally a little window 3 millimeter was done This is the final aspect and during the next 48 hours the patient the eyelid was closed with the temporary tarsography. This is the, the appearance several months later without or with a contact lens and this surgery we can do also this surgery through the eyelid in patients with severe keratinization. What are the indications of the tibial bone capro? The tibial bone capro is indicated in elder patients with bilateral corneal blindness, in patients with severe blindness, in blepharon, highly keratinized ocular surface. We can we we must sure that the retina and the optic nerve is normal, but we can do this surgery in patients with pretisical eyes. We need obviously a normal oral mucosa. And we can do this patient, uh, the, the surgery, even the patient with anodontia. We need also norm, a normal psychiatric health because it's man, uh, the patient needs a lifelong follow up. Frequently, the patient needs multiple surgeries to manage the complication, and sometimes the bad cosmetics is, is a cause of depression. And also low expectation because the patient who, uh, can lose the vision. Uh, suddenly without any without any symptom. The patient with bilateral or total blindness disease as chemical born, Steven Johnson trachoma with corneal compromise, OCP, Rad versus Holt disease, congenital aniridia, epidermal bullosa, both to capro failure and even corneal opacity after vitrectomy with silicone dot are good candidates for the surgery. Why these patients are good candidates for tibial bone keratoprosthesis? In this table, we compare the outcome of the biological capro in the left side, and in the right side, the, the result of the Boston capro only in after 2008, in more or less 5,000 patients. The patient of, of operated by biological capro is younger than the patient of Boston capro, but it's a similar age between the the tibial bone and the capro patient, more or less 63 years old. The patient the, the, with the biological capro have better outcome, but better visual acuity after the surgery than the Boston, the, the Boston capro. More or less 40% of the patient with the biological keratoprosthesis have vision even better than 2030. In compare with the patient with Boston, with more or less uh, between 10 to 14 percent have visual acuity better than 2014. The diagnosis is referring the patient with the biological atoprosis has operated with chemical burn or OCP. The patient operated with OCP, any, uh, any of them uh, was treated with the uh, immunomodulators. And in the patient of the Boston Crapo, uh, even 72 uh, percent uh, of the, of the patient was treated uh, for failure for failed KP, PKP, but the big difference is the complication. In the biological capro, more or less 30 percent of the patient have extrusion after after 10 uh, and even 20 years, but in Boston capro, the extrusion uh, rate is almost 30, uh, 40 percent. It depends of, uh, of the surgery and even depends of the ocular surface that I'm going to explain later. The infection rate uh, is similar, more or less 10%, even endostomatis or, or microbial keratitis. The, comp the retinal complications are similar, more or less between 10 15% of the patients have retinal detachment or spontaneous vitreous hemorrhage. But the glaucoma, we have a big difference. 
only 11% of the patients of tibial bone keratoid prosthesis have glaucoma after the surgery, while between the 40 and 60% of the patients with postural crepio have glaucoma. This is one of the reasons that they, in the international protocol of the mass engineer, right now they recommend that all patients with postural crepio must be treated with the timolov, even the intraocular pressure is normal, and the patient with glaucoma uh, before the surgery must uh, operate it at the same time with Boston Capro and the uh, bulb insertion. Other problem is the retroprostective membrane is only 5% of the biological uh, capros, but in the patient with the Boston, we, we, we know that the more or less be between 30 to 50% of the patient have retroprostective membrane. This is related with the sterile keratolysis, but this is happening more or less 20% of these patients. The, this multicenter study was recently published in 2016 and compared the result with the initial Boston Crapio and repeat Boston Crapio. The best anatomical and functional success was golden in patients with diagnosis of Fock dystrophy, bullous keratopathy, or keratoconus. In contrast, patients with ocular surface disease as OCP, cicatrizing keratoconjunctivitis, Steven Johnson, chemical bore, and gram vessel heart disease had the poorest outcomes. In the same way, other multicenter studies show that the anatomical success of Boston Capro after five years was 78% without ocular surface disease and 30% only with patients with ocular surface disease. The functional alcohol outcome defined a patient with vision better than 2200 and year five is 60% and year seven is 50, 51%. When we compare with biological Capro, the best anatomic outcome we obtained with the preoperative diagnosis was chemical burn in contrast to OCP. Remember, the OCP in any of these of this patients have been treated with immunosuppression. However, uh, the anatomical rotation between chemical burn and Steven Johnson was similar. The functional uh, vision was correlated with the complication. Patients with retinal detachment and glaucoma had the worst visual acuity after the surgery. The Calpern Mayer survival curve of biological crepus showed an anatomical survival at year five in more than 65% of the patient and more at the, the 48% at year 10. However, the functional survival is lower than the anatomic rotation rate. At year five, 40% had a visual acuity better than 2200, and at year 10, nearby 20% remained with good vision. The irritation rate and, and functional survival rate are the gold standard of keratoprosthesis. At year 20, the survival rate is similar to the year 10, but the paper is still under revision, but it's similar, the, 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 the same survival rate. That's what is the cost effectiveness of the capros? The effectiveness of any surgical or medical treatment are quantified in quality of just life years defined as the remaining left year after adjusting for expected quality of life. In ophthalmology, the vision-related quality of life is estimated the best corrected visual acuity. The threshold is defined by the gross domestic product in the United States. Right now, it is $50,000. Then, all technology below this threshold are very cost-effective. The cost of a cataract surgery is $2,000 and the cost of the PKP is uh, is $12,000. When we compare with the Boston one, it is slightly higher, is $16,000. But the, co the cost of the Boston two is is outside of the of the threshold, is $63,000. If we compare the Boston two with the treatment of the extracellular macular radiation and remissive of even the photodynamic therapy is most cost effective, but both of them are overweight the, 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 the threshold. Other paper compared the cost of osteodontal character processes with Boston 2. And the cost of the, the Biolay K-Pro is nearby $32,000. In other words, the cost of the osteodontal character processes and associated complications were overweight with the improvement of quality of life because of the visual improvement. In summary, the first step of any reconstruction of the ocular surface is the eyelid and the tricrisis surgery. In patients with bilateral 
limbal stem cell deficiency with good ocular surface, the first option is the Boston keratoprosthesis. But if the patient has tumor test below 5 mm keratinization, symblepharon, the best scope uh, ha has been gotten with biologic capro, with tooth or with tibia. This reconstructive surgery is indicated only in bilateral corneal blindness. The reason why it's indicated in bilateral corneal blindness is the visual field. After the surgery with the osteodontal keratoprosthesis, the the visual field is restricted to 40 degrees, and after Boston, it's restricted to 60 degrees. There's only well-motivated patients or unilateral patient should be operated with this keratoprosthesis. The indication is bilateral. It is mandatory a multidisciplinary team. It includes the laboratory, because we need a good diagnosis of the infection with PCR, a vitro retinal surgeon, because the complication more than 15% of the patient will have it, and a glaucoma surgeon, especially in patients with Boston keratoprosthesis, and also the oculoplastic surgeon. After 50 years that the, the surgery starts, the gold standard in keratoprosthesis is still the biologic keratoprosthesis with tooth or with the tibial bone. The cost in terms of quality of life of biologic keratoprosthesis is the half of the Boston 2 and the double of Boston 1 but always under the threshold of the $50,000. It's very cost effective. Finally, I'd like to share with you this photo, this picture taken 15 years ago in my city, Bogota, the day before the opening of the Barraquer Institute of America. I you write the professor, Jose Ignacio Barraquer, he is the father of the refractive surgery and passed away in Bogota in 1998. I you left the professor, Joaquin Barraquer, who is still living in Barcelona, but the Barraquer name is not famous for Jose Ignacio, the father of refractive surgery, or Joaquin, who is still living, is famous for their father, Joaquin Ignacio Barraquer Barraquer. He's the father of the intracapsular cataract surgery. The intracapsular cataract surgery was the gold standard of the cataract surgery between the 30s to the 80s of the last century. And he was famous because Ignacio Barraquer operated a king of Duracids, Saud, and other kings. This is the reason why Barraquer name is remembered by, by, by the people in the kingdom. This is, I, I invite you to, to, to send me and to, I invite I, one of you, Dr. Alsualin, to be my, my partner in this trip with the tibial bone keratoprosthesis at application. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Sorio. As we uh, will pass the microphone around and ask for other questions, um, it's really a, a exciting development. The question I would have for you is the development of retroprosthetic membrane and development of glaucoma being different between this and what was reported in the Boston Capro. Do you think that's intrinsic to this design, or is it because with this surgery you always remove the lens and perform vitrectomy, whereas in Boston Capro often will leave them pseudophagic? In Boston Cape related with the the fibroblasts of the cornea, the fibroblast is growing, it's growing, and they try to to to, co to cover no, to uncover the Boston keratoprosthesis. In the biological keratoprosthesis, uh, there are there are two two differences. One of them is the thickness of the keratoprosthesis what we are uh, putting into the eye. It's three millimeters. This is 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 different because the, the fibrillation need to reach the keratoprosthesis is the first one. The other reason is the this biological keratoprosthesis has always done with anterior vitrectomy. They did the same surgery for the last 40 years. They are not changing everything in the last 40 years. Even the modified keratoprosthesis in England, they are doing the same surgery. So this is the reason why the, 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 the keratoprosthesis membrane is lower in the biological keratoprosthesis than the Boston keratoprosthesis. With the video I, I showed you, when we are removing everything, the anterior segment, the, the retroprospective uh, membrane rates in the, in the last publication is only 5% in Boston keratoprosthesis. And even they are putting a large titanium rings 
that they put in the eight point five millimeter titanium rate, uh, but, uh, but that I define only seven and a half of seven millimeter of the of the of the recipe cornea. With a, with a few change, the the retroprostative membrane in after the Boston keratoprosthesis are lower right now. What do you think about the difference in reported glaucoma rates between the two? Mm, there are different different reasons. In both surgeries, currently we are removing the iris. This is one of the reasons. In the patient with Boston Crapo, the one of the it's an unpublished result. I I, I attended the meeting the, the last year in the SCARS. They present an an, an interest an interwar with OCT. And in this patient after one year, two and three years, they are closing the, the, the angle uh, after, uh, after several times in all patients even when they're using a large titanium plate. So this depends, maybe for the, 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 the same keratoprosthesis. So we, we must take care that the biological keratoprosthesis is an exokeratoprosthesis. But the, the Boston keratoprosthesis is a, is, a, is, a, is a sandwich keratoprosthesis. So the behavior is completely different. So maybe it's this, the, 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 the keratoprosthesis is the, 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 the cause of the, of the glaucoma. Thank you for this uh, interesting, challenging subject. I'm really worried about the glaucoma, as mentioned before. And how could you evaluate the patient's pressure postoperatively? Unfortunately, the, we are evaluating the patient with digital IOP. With Dr. Uh, Craven, we try to do an, an neumotonometry in the limbal area and even the scleral area. Uh, it has been described in normal patients, but it's not accurate. We have only the Diaton, the scleral the tonometer. Is, uh, two months ago, it was the published one article about it. But all we need to try to do in more patients in order to know uh, if it's accurate, the measure with the diaton or even the measure with the pneumotonometer. There are one device that they are uh, implanted in Boston Keratoprosis in Germany in the anterior chamber and with an external, uh, I don't know the name, uh, they, they can measure the intraocular pressure. And it related with the, the, the electrical, uh, the, the electrical uh, difference between the anterior chamber and the atmosphere. They are still working in this, in this field. But right now, the, the, the only way to measure the intraocular pressure is digital. We don't have other, other more source. Just, uh, I have uh, two questions. Th there was a step uh, when you uh, implanted the um, tibial bone in the lower eyelid. What was the reason? What is the rationale behind putting it? We need integration. We need the fibrotic tissues or uh, the, the, that is, is growing around the, the bone or around the, the teeth. That we need this tissue. When we put the, the teeth or the, or the tibial plate over the eye, Without the fibrotic tissue, we have an extrusion rate really high, more or less 50% of the patient. Even if we put a corneal graft over the, 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 tibial, the tibial lamina or the, or the tooth, that we need this integration. This is why the reason Dr. Temprano talked about this keratoprosis, the biological keratoprosthesis, because the, the only the non-biological uh, uh, tool in this, in, in this surgery is the optical cylinder of PMMA. Um, okay, the other question, is there a difference between the tibial bone or the tooth in terms of extrusion rate? The extrusion is similar. The extrusion is similar. The, when we are doing the surgery with the two, it's more invasive. We need to reconstruct the, 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 the hole that we create when we remove the, the, the canning. And the, the people in, in England and the people in Italy are talking about their integration with the ligament with the surrounding tissues. And it, it had been published before even 30 years ago. But uh, we are talking with Dr. Temprano, and they changed in the last uh, 15 years all the, uh, his patient from the tooth surgery to the tibial surgery. And right now, the last five years, he do it only to in all his patients, and the, the results are similar. 
are similar. It's easy to get the tibial lamina. In, in contrast, when we are using the tool, we need a maxillofacial surgeon. Thank you, Dr. Rosario, for this presentation. I just have a couple of questions. Uh, is there any age limit uh, for your selection? Um, that's number one. Is in particular, the bone density. This is my question. Do you do like bone scan and check the bone density before uh, doing this kind of procedure? Do you need to have some uh, certain, you know, cortical thickness or something, and like a lot rough estimate uh, so it can survive? This one. Uh, the, the, the second thing is that uh, um, I, I noticed that the, the size is fixed, as you mentioned, like 40. It gives only 40 visual field. Is there any advancement in the future looking into making it larger so it will it will give larger visual field? Uh, larger what? Is larger visual field. So instead of refining like 4 millimeters, ah, okay, so okay, you okay, can okay. refine yes. uh, 6 millimeters or something like that. So what's the reason why you are just uh, limited to that kind of refination, which is only for and give, give very limited visual field. So that's the, the, the main thing. The last question is about the uh, patients with the uh, OCPs and Stephen Johnson. Uh, do you need to uh, continue on giving them, uh, uh, you know, uh, immunosuppressant agent during the whole course of all this, like uh, which takes like six months from the start until the end? Any reactivation, any special reaction in, in these two diseases in particular when you do this kind of Diseases. Okay, there are a limit in Spain. The limit is 80 years old, but in the kingdom maybe 70. <laughs> the bond we, we we need to to be sure that the outcome will be we will have a good outcome in this kind of patient. That we have a limit of age is, is true. Uh, in all patients, we only the doctor Tempano we recommend only an X-ray of the tibia, no more. And he checked the the, the, the the things of the cortex, of the cortical, of the cortical bone. No more. It's not necessary the CT or other, other things. Some patients need the densi densitometry. Some patients, and we need a follow-up also with the densitometry, because some patients we have a, a, a great resorption after the surgery. Some patients we don't know why. Maybe related when we are doing the drill, if we are not watching the, the bone with BSS, with uh, enough BSS, maybe we are we are dying of the osteoblasts and old cells. Maybe this is one of the reasons. I don't know. We are speculating. But maybe it's related with this kind of things. The question about the Steven Johnson syndrome with the results, with the Steven Johnson syndrome with TBI blocker toxicity, the same as chemical board, the best outcomes. But Penfigot is different. The reason why the pain figure that had the worst outcome is because Dr. Empano never treat these patients. They do the surgery and left the patient with the surgery and that's all. The more or less 30% of this patient was treated after the first year. After the first, the, 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 the year five is more or less 70%. The patient that did pass the, f the, 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 the year five, they maintain the keratoprosthesis. But the, the retention rate is only 30% in this patient. The spirit in Boston keratoprosthesis, with this kind of patient, in the pain figure that, and Steven Johnson, they are treating the patient with immunosuppression. And the retention rate in this patient is even 70% at year five in some groups. That we need a multidisciplinary treatment. Unfortunately, we have a rheumatologist right now in the in, in KK. That we need to treat this patient. I am 100% sure. What kind of treatment? The pain of the patient, the pain of the severity. We normally we, we use an step step ladder approach. We start with methotrexate. After that, we we follow with azathioprine, cyclosporine. After that, MMF, tracolimus, and finally the biologicals. That the depend of the of, of the stage of every patient, uh, we treat the patient, and depend of, of course depend what happened with the oral mucosa after the surgery. If the oral mucosa, we have ulceration in the oral mucosa really soon in the first two months, we need to treat the patient even with cyclophosphamide. Uh -huh. That depends on the patient. Okay. And the size of trephination? The size of trephination? Yeah, one centimeter. Yeah. In the tibial bone, it's, the diameter is one centimeter. One yes, and the thickness is three millimeters. The thickness is three millimeters, and the diameter is one centimeter. Ah, uh, the optical cylinders, they, they are several types of optical cylinders. 
In the surgery, well, the surgery was done in Barraquil Clinic. We are using the same cylinder that Dr. Tempano used for the last 40 years. That's, I, I respect this kind of thing because he's my mentor. Uh, we, we didn't change any, in, any, any step of the surgery when I was doing my, 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 my fellowship. So it was, uh, but we have right, right now, right? we have right now new, new optical cylinders. And the posterior plate is higher. Higher in in uh, YouTube, you can you can see a video of osteo This is one of the new design of the of the optical cylinders, and they increase the the op the, the visual field to more or less 55 degrees. Okay. It's okay. similar to Boston keratoconsis, but no more than, than 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 60 because the the light is is entering through the eye to a 3.5 millimeters. That is the 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 anterior surface of the optical cylinders. Dr. Motowa. <laughs> Thank you for excellent lecture. Actually, this type of uh, surgery not, uh, need two things, um, patient surgeon and also motivated patients. I remember uh, 96, uh, Dr. Dolman, he visited us here, and we did uh, some cases. Um, the problem with this type of surgery, it took at least three months. and. Uh, it is not just only one step, it is three steps at least. And uh, sometimes patient will get infection while he's waiting for the final step. And the two enemies for this, the most important is to highly selection for such patient. Then the other two enemies, the glaucoma and also infection. So most of patients, which we did at that time, they ended with either endophthalmitis or optic nerve atrophy. So it's important to evaluate patient beforehand because after this long uh, procedure and uh, long waiting, he will be uh, just only get n no benefit from surgery. So uh, I think those patients, however, there are some reported, uh, some for 20 years, they have 80% uh, success and uh, uh, extraction was at least one year. So I think there is a place for such type of surgery but it should be carefully selected, and patient should be aware what's going on, and his part, and the most important part of the, this type of surgery. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, you are, I agree with you. We need a multidisciplinary team. We need a PCR for diagnosis of the infectious disease, bacterial and fungus, because it's really important to diagnose the, this patient in the first 48 hours. And also that's the, uh, the, the selection of the patient is really, really important, really, really important. I always uh, when I, I always explain to the patient that the the vision is a gift after the surgery because he he could lose the vision suddenly without any symptom. So I explain I explain I explain them. It's a gift. Please do your normal life as you could see during I don't know how many time, maybe one year, months, or maybe the decade. But it's a gift. Because I always explain to the patient that this is a, the, the, last, the, last, the last surgery we, we can offer to the patient. But also, uh, unfortunately, we have this kind of surgery to offer them. Thank you, Dr. Osorio, for your very interesting experience. We really are fortunate to share this with you today. And thanks, everyone, for your attention, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.